Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the December 2nd meeting of the Lorain County Board of Commissioners. I'm going to read today's proverb. It's 28, 25 through 26. Greed causes fighting. Trusting the Lord leads to prosperity. Those who trust their own insight are foolish, but anyone who walks in wisdom is safe. Who's the dog this morning? Oh, he's a four month old boxer mix. Uh, male. He's ready for adoption on the 5th. Uh, we have 21 other dogs there, so Aww, this isn't your type, come see nail. us. We also made a, a little improvement over there. Not a little. I, we divided up. We had a large outside run. Now we have three. We divided it uh, into thirds, so we can get more dogs yeah. outside to exercise. <laughs> It was oh. a long, ongoing project, but we finally got it done. Good. Cool. That's great. Look at how cute. <laughs> He's a sweetie. Brandy Schnell from our Solways Department. Good morning, commissioners Good morning. and everyone else. Um, I'm Brandy Schnell from the Lorraine County Solid Waste Management District. We did, with America Recycles Day, we had a display at the Carlisle Visitors Center where people were able to come in and sign their America Recycles Day pledge cards, and they were also able to enter into a drawing for a rain barrel. Uh, we had 56 entries, which is great, and so I'm going to bring that up, and, and we're going to draw the winner. We voted for you, Matt, to draw the winner. Oh, voted for me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That'll teach you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the rain barrel. And it looks like a real barrel. Okay. <laughs> and the winner is Brandy Snell. No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Heather Ryan of Illyria. Oh. Congratulations, Congratulations Heather. Yeah. Heather. Heather Ryan of Illyria will be calling you to pick up your free rain barrel. How do you transport <laughs> that thing home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we haven't talked. No, we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk? Under resolutions number one, investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Advances and repayments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Travel? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under the Commissioner's authorized various personnel actions as indicated on the summer sheet for employees within jurisdiction of the County Commissioner. Mr. Cortez? Thank you, Madam President. I do have a number of, of uh, things I want to talk to the Board about. Uh, potential hires at the Collection Center, 
um, some potential uh, board nominees, and uh, I spoke with a labor consultant yesterday. I need to talk to you about uh, a little bit more about what we're going to do with our labor contract that's getting ready to expire and potential litigation. All those topics are available under the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion, so to ask at the conclusion of our regular board meeting, we go into executive session and we talk about those issues that I've outlined. Thank you. Thank you. Approving of the reading of the minutes of November 25th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Authorized payment of $1,000 to Boyer and Cool Home for Funerals Lorraine for indigent veteran Randolph Maurice Caswell Lorraine in accordance with the ORC 5901.29. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Under <coughs> solid waste, advertised for bids for the LED static highway sign at Lorain County Port Authority Complex, Laria. Notice to be in the Chronicle on December 23rd and 30th and open at 2 p.m. on January 6th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Is this a sign that's going to be able to be seen from 57? Yes. <coughs> uh, as you know, um, and it's been a... You know, some projects don't <coughs> seem to really get the kind of traction you think they're going to get. And this, is, this isn't an urgency on this project. We're putting in the training center over at the uh, collection center. Well, part of, part of that, what we, we take, we've taken a look at, and it'll be coming back to the board for concept approval, is if you remember initially we were going to <coughs> come in to, you okay, Commissioner? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just the, the, uh, to the, the back way we do off of Abbey, I should be the back way, but the Abbey Road entrance, we were going to uh, move towards the back of the building on the drive, then come out the right. front of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we weren't able to secure all of the building at the time. It was a condo, and we were in the condo nest. Uh, we have since, as the Port Authority, been able to uh, acquire the additional parcels so that the entire building now rests in the control of the Port Authority. The board originally approved putting the training center up where the old bookseller was, but the concept may now be to put the training center up there, expand out a little wider, and go back to that original concept, Abbey Road, out into the parking area and exit to the, the front there. The reason we're re-looking at that is because the turn radius is really sharp inside that building. Mm -hmm. And anything bigger than a, a mid-sized car, sometimes they, well, not sometimes, a lot of times they end up having to make part of the turn back up mm -hmm. and finish mm -hmm. the turn. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, it's not deterring residents from coming. We've had 30,000 plus mm -hmm. visits. More than that, we had a $50,000 <coughs> or 50,000 person Was it? not yeah. too long ago, yeah. The, the, the uh, so, but there's always been a potential for a hazardous situation with the movement of vehicles and people in that, that <coughs> corridor. So as part of that, um, the whole process, when we bring that to you, we're also going to bring you as a suggestion that we use that big sign on 57 to advertise the collection center and the things that are going on at the training center. Uh, the, the sign will be under the control of the Port Authority. There'll be other things on the sign, but, but it also will be used to make announcements with, for solid waste and the things that are going on there. Shred uh, days, tire days. Exactly. I, I, uh, <coughs> I, th I think it's a, it's going to be a real good addition. We have to work out, you know, how it's going to be used. Again, it won't be, at the end of the day, it won't be controlled by the solid waste district, but since they're installing the sign, they'll have the lion's share of the advertisement mm -hmm. and on the, there'll be no charge back to them as we use the sign over here at the transportation center. So uh, I, I want to get quotes on it from outside. We, we've had a few people come in and look at it. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be borderline whether we could take quotes or seal bids so we're just going to be uh, cautious and go the seal bid route and see what happens and if it's too expensive we may have to walk away from it we're grandfathered on that sign it's hard to get these signs anymore but we're grandfathered on that big one out there in the parking mm -hmm. lot and anything's better than the big red flea market <laughs> sign out there and along with these changes we're also going to going to paint the building take out some of the some of the hard surfaces that are never going to be used again and and, and make it look much had better as a corporate neighbor in, in that in that area over there. Good. 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 Thanks for the update. Kowski? <coughs> Aye. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under transit, approve and enter an agreement with City of Overland to provide transportation service effective January 4, 2016 through December 29, 2016. City of Overland will provide $22.26 per hour to be used by 
the transit as match for grant funds to support the service plus a $50 monthly fee to cover administrative expenses. No general funds are, will be used. So moved. Second. Discussion? Well, it's just we had this discussion with the team of Lorraine County about the importance of the transit. Uh, and just Oberlin's partnership uh, really makes a big difference, which we had more communities who would tie in with us and help us to get some of these services provided just because of the match we get back from the feds. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, wish we had 30 of these contracts. Right. It would, it would be nice to have these, develop these partnerships. The, you know, unfortunately like us, a lot of these municipalities don't have the, the liquidity and the <coughs> cash. <coughs> All you have to do is you know, look at what's going on in Lorraine and, and O'Leary's trying for another income tax initiative to, to show up their budget. Uh, everybody's hurting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more and more business leaders are realizing how important transit is to helping get people to work. And, uh, you know, our, we, we we've heard. already lost some, peop some potential companies because of not having transit. We heard yesterday from, from a, a, a business that I've known for some time, in fact, uh, I think 10 years ago we did some uh, um, abatements right. and, and, uh, to help expand that company and it's over in Avon. Mm -hmm. uh, now this is Avon, so it's one of our premier communities and indicated that he has 100 permanent jobs and he has 50 that are through a temp service because he can't find another 50 people. At, and it's, it, these are $10 an hour jobs and right. I want to mislead you. <coughs> but he can't consistently come to work because of transportation issues. Mm -hmm. So he uses the temp service because they're responsible for getting bodies there. Okay. And what the temp service does is they drive them mm -hmm. to his location mm -hmm. and, and drop them off and pick them up. So he doesn't have to worry about, you know, eight, I'm being metaphoric here, but eight o'clock in the morning when he pushes the button to get the machines rolling, whether he has the 50 bodies he needs or only right. 42 show up because eight couldn't find transportation right. that morning. Uh, and he said that if if we had a consistent transit, he believes that a lot of that problem could be alleviated because there is there is already workforce that will take those kind of jobs, uh, but we need to get them over there. Mm -hmm. That's a significant issue we've yeah. got. It was also mentioned that a lot of the site selectors are, are, and the packages going out, they want to know that there's an actual route going past the property where they would potentially have a business so that they know that they can get people there to work so well yeah, that's a it's a and that's the conversation we need to have with you know Avon North Ridgeville Avon Lake this business is located in Avon right, right. his working his workers are going to be drawn from the Elyria Lorraine area um, given the, the 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 level of compensation of the job they're responsible jobs they're, they're decent jobs but he so Avon needs public transportation as well as Lorraine and O'Leary because right. they need workers to go there. They need the uh, manufacturers and the businesses there to give them a solid income t uh, income tax base, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the same thing will happen when Capellas comes in and Menards come in. That's all great, all that expansion, but they need to get workers to those job sites. Right. Right. Uh, you can have all the nicety you want, but if you can't keep workers there and keep them there consistently, that's not going to—it's not going to function very well. So that's why some of the communities are saying, "Well, what can tr transit do for, for us? We don't need transit in this community. People have cars in this community. You still need workers, and the workers right. still need to get transported there." So we—that's okay. another part of the message that we need to continue to send because we have not been successful in in the in the newer communities on the east side of. Lorain County with with uh, with vote account. You know, we have big uh, growth in health care, and you look at the support staff that's in you know any hospital around yes, here, and you know most of those folks, uh, you know, you can tell money money's tight, and they need a way to just get to work as well too. So, so you know, hopefully we'll be able to, to you know cobble together the, the the message that people understand this time when we make an initiative that that even though you live in a community that seemingly doesn't really require mass transit, you still have a need for it. Maybe time to talk to Avon again. They partnered with us back, you know, years ago. That was Avon Lake. That was Avon Lake that did? Yes. Okay. Well, we were talking to Avon and Avon Lake. <laughs> well, you know, when they partnered with it, it was more about their citizenry right. than it was about jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they, they, they really didn't see uh, a, a, an overarching priority for the limited services that we could provide with them as, as a partner. 
we need parking rights. We're missing a huge opportunity. Quite frankly, uh, we should have owned the land before the explosion in Avon along that corridor. We've looked at many, uh, many things along uh, at 83, and then when the Nagel interchange was coming in, all the property was gone already. Right. The, the, uh, I, I would love to see us with a parking ride somewhere by Jay Cox or Lair Nagel, mm -hmm. uh, and so that we can transport people um, to job opportunities. Now, I don't want to be criticized again like we were two years ago about transporting people to Cleveland. Let, let me make this clear, it's not to you, but while we speak, that 50% of our people leave this county every day to go to work. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an important element of, of getting them to jobs is mass transit. They're leaving here, they're going to park and rides in Cuyahoga County sometimes. We, we need to be part of that regional approach to move people to jobs so they can come home here and they can, they can have prosperity here and they spend here and they live here and, and they grow their families here. It's, it's unrealistic to think that we have a wall at the border over uh, between West Lake and Avon, Avon Lake and Bay Village. It just doesn't exist. What we have to do is watch the car counts leaving Lorain County and, and for the most part in the morning, coming back in the evening. And, and, and that's the misunderstanding. We were criticized because we were taking people down to the casino or down to Public Square trying to hook them up with the transportation. What we're trying to do is hook them up with a job and hook them Forceful. up with a way to get downtown or get downtown and get on that Euclid corridor where hundreds of millions of taxpayers' dollars, our taxpayers' dollars, were spent for the innovation down there to be able to go to Cleveland Clinic and hook up with that transportation system. We should be able to, somebody should be able to get on a bus in Lorraine, get downtown to Public Square and get on that Euclid corridor and go to the Cleveland Clinic if they need to. Well, that's exploded. I was talking with uh, Valerie McCall, who is on the WAC, the chief of staff, Jackson, chief of staff for Mayor Jackson and Joe Calabrese, and the expected return on that investment was going to be three or three and a half billion dollars in development along that quarter. They they broken like six billion dollars in investment with residential and businesses opening and the impact that. Well, sure, you know, they went down. Health they, line has. They blighted all of that. They took down a lot of the, the, the older. Right. They, they've, they've opened land so that it can be redeveloped. Uh, all that demo that's gone on down the corridor. My, my concern for our residents, though, is, is clearly to be able to hook them with the services they need. Uh, now, we got the new hospital here, and, and, and that's, gonna, that's going to be great. But there's still things that are done mm -hmm. okay. down there at the main campuses. You'll be surprised. I, I look, just from our group health care, I look at where our payments mm -hmm. go. Uh, and, and you'd be surprised how many people are, are at the main campuses uh, having uh, various ailments treated down there. And, and right now, if you don't have the ability to have somebody drive you or drive yourself, you're not getting down there. Yeah, and the trends are all showing fewer millennials really want to even hold a driver's license. Uh, they definitely want to be using public transit. And uh, so times are changing. We need to yes, change with the times. Anyway, I know you didn't ask for all that, but... No, it was a good discussion out. after yesterday. I mean, it's very pertinent to what's going on in our county. Yep. <coughs> Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Lindy. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under developmental disabilities, approve agreement with developmental disability and prosecutor for support of developmental disabil disabled individuals and declare it necessary to transfer funds pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 5705, 15, and 16. Said fees for year 2016 and 17 will be $31,023. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lindy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under the engineer intern and consent legislation with ODOT to perform a bridge replacement structure located on Overland Road, Township Road 39 over Ingle, Ditch, Amherst Township. Bridge is currently scheduled to be constructed in 2016. No funds are required from the county except that the engineer agrees to assume 100% of total costs of any added construction items requested by the county and not necessary of improvement as determined by state and federal highway administration. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kassin. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Cortez. <coughs> I have no further comment this morning. Thank you. Mr. Ennis. I have no report this morning. Wow. <laughs> well, as was stated, we had our Timor and County Board meeting uh, yesterday morning. Uh, and then after that, we had a, uh, a ditch hearing for the Gore Orphanage Ditch, their first of two um, 
hopefully we we're going to come to some resolution on that. We had one property owner who was not uh, real happy about the, the progress of that ditch being uh, cleaned out. So hopefully by the end of the year we'll have that uh, underway. And other than that, that's about it. Everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Go Browns. I mean, really, go Browns. <laughs> <laughs> with you. Yeah. 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 Don't find any more creative ways to lose. Right, right. right. Unbelievable. Um, a kick six. God bless John Gurdon and what he uh, calls things. <laughs> uh, yeah, as uh, Commissioner Kosey said, Team Lorain County met uh, yesterday morning going over. We'll be having our annual Groundhog Economic Forecast coming up at the end of January, 1st of February. Uh, so just a lot of dialogue on how the dynamics of the organization are going to change. Uh, attraction is no longer a major part of the equation. Jobs Ohio has changed it through Team Neo down to us to business uh, retention and expansion. Uh, Jim, you want to jump in on this conversation as our dialogue went yesterday? I wasn't paying any attention to oh. your commission. Uh, Imagine uh, that. He never, <laughs> he never does. I was talking about the Team Lorraine County discussion as it's changing from an attraction piece. And as we come out of this recession, to a degree, is now business you know, retention and expansion and some know, overlaps. The, the attraction piece always sounds glamorous until you try to do it. Right. Um, years ago, in the mosaic of, of the strategies that were being deployed in Lorain County, there really was no attraction strategy, and it was felt that that one was needed, and hence the Team Lorain County uh, was, was formed to fill that void. But sometimes you're filling a void that really isn't a void and doesn't need to be filled. The, it's, it's an, it, there's been no success in the attraction piece. Um, nothing long term and nothing. Correct. And companies, always they, they hire firms to go out mm -hmm. and do site evaluations, site selections. And normally by the time they're talking to us, they've already been on the ground several times and they pretty well have a feel for where they, they want to be at. Uh, the concept is old. It's, it's 35, 40 years old where you go out and you, right. you go to different uh, events and you try to lure companies to come to your community. Uh, I, I don't think that that's the strategy anybody's having success with. And we know that Team uh, NEO is now on its third re reinvention of itself uh, because they were supposed to be the attraction arm for Northeast Ohio when they first started. Thankfully, we haven't, we haven't gone through the millions and millions and millions of dollars. I can keep going millions with that Team NEO went through in the last decade plus without really satisfying any of that, that, that uh, outcomes that they, they figured they were going to get. It'll be interesting what happens with Team Lorain County. I think, that, I think that we have a need for Team Lorain County somewhere in, in the mix, uh, but, but uh, they have a, they're going to have a struggle. Funding is going to be an issue. Uh, finding finding a niche that they're not stepping on somebody else's toes mm -hmm. is, is a bit of an issue. Um, but I thought the meeting was one of the most productive ones we had yesterday. The conversation was, was really good. Mm -hmm. um, and we have until May or June to work collaboratively with, with the, the folks that are there in the private sector to, to come up with what the next look's going to be for Team, team Lorain County. Well, said it was good discussion yesterday. I mean, it was all out on the table. And we heard a lot of issues from the private sector, and we conveyed our issues from the government side. And you know, it, it's it's a great uh, for, it's a great environment for that conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and I've often suggested to Team Wayne County that a facilitation role between business and government is is also an important mm -hmm. part of what they should be doing. Um, and and I also suggested that with regard to. Uh, working collaboratively on regional um, uh, income tax sharing. Oh, yeah, the regional revenue sharing. Right, came and, up. and because we see businesses moving from one community to an adjacent community within the, the whole of our community. And you know, revenue agreements make, make that a little bit easier to bear from the losing to the gaining community. And we need to start that looking at that. And Team Marine County could be a voice in, in how that's how that's facilitated. They don't really have a dog in the hunt. Everybody else has something a, you know, that, 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 that they're trying to achieve. Team Lorraine County is, uh, is neutral in that. They're, they're worried about the four, four corners of Lorain County rather than just one part of Lorain County. So hopefully they can find a really good role. But yeah, it was a great meeting yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. Again, the Team Lorain County Gorphanage Ditch. Uh, 
Um, and if you're free Friday night, I'll be just celebrating bartending at Mexican oh, Control from wow. 6 to 9. So I'll be wow. slinging drinks. Heavy pour there? Well, always a heavy pour. Man. <laughs> I pour them for you like I pour them for me. <laughs> End of my report. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, had a great uh, Thanksgiving with, uh, with family and uh, the uh, transit advocacy group that's been meeting in the county is going to resume the meetings now with uh, uh, the Thanksgiving holiday behind us. Uh, so we'll be getting back to work on that. Um, also, a Friday morning, 8.30 a.m. is going to be the Community Alliance, the roundtable of elected officials. Um, very much appreciate what the Community Alliance does. There aren't a lot of counties that actually bring together city and, and township leaders on a regular basis to, to collaboratively work on issues. But uh, uh, we're fortunate enough to have such an organization and uh, so looking forward to attending that on, on Friday. Um, also, I know we've been going through these budget hearings and uh, uh, we've said time and time again about how tight money is. Uh, I still have you know great concerns because we've seen requests come in above par from <clears throat> the previous uh, year and uh, I would just uh, you know encourage my colleagues if you're interested I, I think we should look at you know sending a letter to the departments that have made requests beyond par um, and ask them to once again go back to the drawing board and reconsider um, you know uh, in an effort to to say to them, hey, we're willing to work with you, but you know you have to understand just how serious the situation is. Give them, I guess you could say, one more uh, bite at the apple to see if they can come up with an alternate uh, proposal so that we can get as close as possible uh, because right now we're probably looking at maybe about a $2.3 million uh, difference in what the ask are and what we've got available. And you know, we just have limited resources and the the state is absolutely never going to come to our aid. Uh, you know, things are just getting worse down there. So uh, the Calvary is not coming. We're on our own. We have to fend for ourselves. So I think, uh, you know, if my colleagues would be supportive, I think we should send yet uh, uh, another letter just simply stating what the situation is and asking them to fine tune their numbers uh, one more time before we ultimately make the final decision. Give them the opportunity before right. we finish up. Yeah, that's that's fine. Right. I, no letter. Welcome to being a commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> so you make all your friends angry yeah. right before yeah, Christmas. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, if we can draw something out, send it to all the departments who have come above last year's allocation, and see if we can work with them to bring it closer down to gap the shortfall. Especially when where they're asking us to raise their baseline for future years, I have a kind of issue with that especially I know some you know police cars or sheriff's cars we we may need but um, I don't want to raise that for the for future years so the the um, as since we're talking about the budget by May some of the requested additional funds was for guaranteed contractually obligated raises right. oh that yeah the 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 uh, so I would caution that and we've got some mandates in there too. Right, elections. You know, that that we approve those contracts here. So mm -hmm. we, right. I'll give you just to, because the public doesn't really understand a lot of what we do sometimes, mm -hmm. and it, and we do try to explain, uh, but we, you know we don't get a lot of visitors and and people sometimes fashion ideas of what we're doing from conversations they have with people that still don't know what we're doing. The, you know, the sheriff's department is at the tail end. Contract. of the contract so when we're opening our contract they're just heading into the, the second year of a three-year contract and their folks are merely getting what the lead contracts got a couple years before um, so you know trying to sort again you know sort out what we're what's obligated in the collective bargaining agreements and, and what is actually truly an increase outside of that uh, That's what we need, yeah. you know, I mean, and quite frankly, we may need reductions. Uh, if we froze everybody, he still has to give those contractual contracted uh, raises from the CBA. So he would need to make cuts and, and possibly cuts in, in, in the, um, the, mo the most expensive area, the biggest area, which would be uh, salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, I so. think if we just go back and have them, I mean, again, we know the collective bargaining agreements that we have to honor, uh, but you know, go back and see what else can be taken out of those to get us back down to par. I think we're all aware of, and again, it's good to explain it to the public. We know we're in contracts, and they rotate over a three-year basis to get all 19 units taken care of, but somewhere we can tighten it up. So let them re-examine their budget, you know. Sharpen yeah. the pencils. Yeah, well, exactly. Lisa, Use a microscope. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa and I will take care of that. We'll get, the, we'll get this stuff out. Okay. You get to do the letter, Lisa. Pardon? You get to do the letter. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we were, pleasure or not. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. <laughs> I can make it sound good. <laughs> Anything else? No. Okay. Madam, Madam Clerk, can I interrupt you for a moment? Sure. I, I, I had a piece of business that I lost in my stack of paper. Um, Commissioners, I, I need to get a resolution on our stop loss contract for health care. It's, it's, it's several months old. Uh, somehow it got, we lost track of this contract and MMOs contacted us for it. It's, it's merely our specific stop loss agreement. Um, this is housekeeping on this. Uh, we, we should have done it months and months ago. We're, we're, we're actually operating under it mm -hmm. right now, but we just need to clarify uh, uh, that we signed all this and got it uh, submitted. And this is to our advantage because we've already paid for this in, in our health care. I just want to make sure that we, if we have any claims, that there's no technical glitch in getting those resolved. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Ms. Wallandy? Aye. Mr. Aye. Let's see if there's any others. Okay. Madam Clerk? Is that it? That's it. Down there that way? Yep. I, I, uh, I, I think my waiting. senior moments I think you got over. extra, <laughs> yeah, extra time down there, so. Uh, board correspondence? Yeah, yeah, I just thought it. I move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Public comment? Anybody wishing to address the board this morning? You came in late. Did you need us for anything today? No. Mr. Bailey? No? I'm just between four meetings. Okay. Well, see none. I move that we go into executive session as outlined by the administrator and assistant county prosecutor. Second. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorraine County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 930 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.